Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand for prayer real quick, please. Jerome, would you lead us in prayer? Yes, Father God, we come this morning thanking you, Lord. Thanking you for thy help, Lord. Thanking you for this opportunity, Lord. Thanking you for life, health, and strength, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord. We're just asking, Lord, that you will pour thy spirit upon us, Lord. That you will grant us the help that we're in need of, Lord. Continue to touch the hearts and minds, Lord. And for all that you do, give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ms. Foster, can you hear me? <clears throat> can you hear me? You told me that I needed to speak louder or closer to the microphone, so I want to make sure you can hear me. Okay, I need to do a roll call real quick, please. Uh, Stephen, you want to lead us in some singing, please? Good morning, everybody. Let's turn to page 442 in your hymnal.
turn over to page 644. And this is who we are through all this mess. Everybody's here. It's, it's 
it's uh could be worse there's a, a lot i guess everybody knows there's a lot going on out there and we're i don't guess we really need for anything i don't need for anything there's a lot of stuff i'd like to have but i don't guess i need anything right now and that's a whole lot more than a lot of other people can say that's out there so i i really thank god for that thank the mission but i I, I thank God for that. Anyone have any testimonies, anything to be grateful for? Mm-hmm. Life, health, and strength. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I hope we have. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just personally happy that, that I'm in a good place with all this, and, and I see other people that are in a good place. We're not, we're not, like, I see the people that are just completely not caring, whatever. Does that mean to me? I don't know what to believe. I don't know if they believe in the media. I don't know. I tell stories to try to sell people, so whatever. I don't know what's real. I don't know. And then I see people that are completely freaking out. Uh, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm, I'm happy that God put me where I'm cautious and uh, and careful, and concerned, but I'm also solid. You know, because what what's going to happen is going to happen. And that's it. And I see other people like that as well. And I, I, that's where I know I'm built. You know. Solid foundation of Jesus. So, thanks to Amen. Amen. I want to praise God for keeping me safe and giving me a safe place to stay. Amen. Amen. William? Yeah, I'd like to thank the mission for all the help that they've given me to uh, all the pastors here and the, uh, the men in the mission for their prayers. Um, I am grateful to be here. I'm thankful to God. And uh, I just Pray that we all stay in good health and uh, remain calm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen? Yeah, I want to thank the Lord for all the mercy that He's shown me over the years. Um, I also want to thank Him for the blessings that He's given me, especially this past year. He blessed me with a lot of chances and opportunities to make my life better. And I just want to thank Him for that. All right. I don't have any prayer requests. Pray for. There's a lot to pray for. Pray for. Miss Ledger. Okay. And Sister Rhonda. Yeah, Miss Rhonda. I saw her uh, last Saturday before we were got quarantined, and she was okay then. But uh, do we pray for her? Miss Foster. Good family. Okay. For Reverend Ledger to bring the message this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. My family that's out there. Okay. Stephen? Let's pray for all of our families that are around yeah. there. Amen. Yeah. Let's continue to lift up Kathy and uh, Rajay. Okay. Kathy and Rajay. Um, a prayer oh. for everybody and every business. <clears throat> Yeah, we pray that this this uh, gets settled here pretty soon, so it don't get any worse than they're projecting it already is going to be. Judd? No, just you know what's <clears throat> happening now with this situation is what's happening normally when there is no crisis. You put your life and your faith in Christ. You use our hands and give us a raise, smart, and put the rest in His hands. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. That's it. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's all stand for prayer. Doug, would you lead us in prayer, please?
Okay, the ushers, please. I'm, I'm just going to say one more thing uh, that you know, reiterate what Reverend Wooten has said. I guess everybody reads the internet and hears about everything going on with this, and they everybody always says the same thing. The, the, the number one thing that we can all do to help prevent this is wash our hands. And uh, I see it in the dorm. I see people walking out of the bathroom every once in a while without washing their hands. And I even caught myself... Last night, I washed my hands over in the, the uh, dining hall and put sanitizer on and then walked straight in the bathroom and used the restroom and came out and realized I didn't wash my hands and I turned around and went back. So it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, don't feel bad if you forget. All of us are going to forget every once in a while, but maybe just just try to remember as best as you can because that's, that's the number one thing. Judd? So. All right. 
All right, Reverend Ledger. Lord, keep me safe till the storm passes by. That was the song Brother Wooten played for the offertory this morning. And that is in my heart, too. Keep us safe till the storm passes by. Amen. Woke up this morning and said, Lord, thank you for another day of good health. You know, sometimes uh, in the view of things that are going on, a few aches and pains just kind of fade. Did you notice that? (laughs) Ah. March 22nd, 2020. Let's turn in our Bibles to Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. Ezekiel, chapter 33. And thank you for standing in reverence to God's Word. That has been a a thing that we've done here from the day I came to the mission over 40 years ago. Ezekiel. 33. Ezekiel was a very, very interesting prophet. If you haven't read his book, you ought to take time to do it. We're reading today from Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning at verse number 1. You'll hear some pages turning. Ezekiel 33, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of my people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet taketh not warning. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own hand, his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning delivereth his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, people be not warned. If the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So then, so thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, thou warn the wicked in his way to turn him from it. If he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus she speaks, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how shall we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. The Lord, we need the anointing of God for it to do any good. Someone has said preaching without the anointing is worse than not preaching at all. Please help us today and anoint us, Lord, with that peculiar power of God that speaks to the hearts of people. And help us, Lord, in all that we say, and we will praise thee and thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. (coughs) I feel like my trumpet's a little bit hoarse this morning. So if you know how to pray, I'd appreciate a prayer for my voice. 
we started singing the very first hymn, and I love to sing the hymns with everybody, and I already could feel it. So if I sound a little hoarse, forgive me. I don't feel sick, but I definitely feel hoarse. But the Lord said, you're a trumpet. Blow the trumpet. So I'm going to try my best to blow the trumpet today. I have set thee a watchman. If thou do not warn the wicked, he shall die in his sins, but his blood will I require at your hand. As I live, saith the Lord, God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Quite a, while, quite a while before this took place, the people of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt. The Egyptians had made them rigorous slaves. They called it the Iron Furnace. But God raised up a man to lead them out of the iron furnace and into what he called the promised land. Moses, God used Moses mightily to bring the people of Israel out of slavery and into a free land of milk and honey. You know, at first they were very, very grateful for what God did for them. But as time went on, they forgot what God had done. I'd like to ask you this morning, do you remember when you were a slave to sin? And how the Lord saved you from the mess you were in? But something's changed from then to now. Now, you insist on having your own way. It's not, Lord, thy will be done in me, but, Lord, my will be done. Jesus Christ has called you, believer, on to holiness. He brought you out of the prison house of sin to bring you in to the holy land of heart purity. There's nothing else in the Bible, folks. This is, the, this is it. This is not optional. But you have stubbornly resisted God's call to be sanctified holy. Instead of making a full surrender... You've drawn back, and now self possesses you. Your testimony is empty now. You ramble on while people politely wait for you to get finished. Instead of glorifying God and Jesus, you're glorifying yourself. Pride has taken over. Now you know better than everybody else. No one can instruct you. You know it all. I'm talking to some people who sat across from me in my little office. Now the Lord has given you many chances to humble yourself, but you will not heed the voice of God. The Lord says this morning, Why will you die? I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that he should turn to Christ and live. But then, the Lord God speaks to the watchman. Behold, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Watchman, what of the night? What of the night? Have you been faithful to those that know thee? Is your message clear and pointed? Have you preached the word? Have you been faithful to your hearers? 
Some of you in this congregation have been called of God to preach the word, but you have not answered his call. I ask you this morning, when are you going to pick up the trumpet? This morning, Brother Jerome was talking about the, just made mention of the gospel plow and getting behind the gospel plow and not looking back. Now, my friend George Schaefer, former director of this mission, did not ever tell me that he had many visions or dreams. I only recall one vision or dream that God gave to George Schaefer. He said he looked, he was, appeared to be at a very high altitude over America. Perhaps like on the space station or something. But he could see the country of America below him. And on the country of America were hundreds of little gold plows that were moving across the country. Some of those plows had stopped moving. Others had never started. But there were a few that kept moving. God said to George, these are the golden plows of the preachers of America. I don't know why you have not answered the call of God to do the highest calling in the universe, to declare the truth of God's word. I can't imagine why anybody would refuse such an honor, such glory, such praise that shall come to those who are faithful to the word. There was one man who went to his mother she, uh, back in the, in the 1700s, Mom, they made me president of the United States today. Mama said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, son. I'd hope God would call you to preach. When will you pick up the trumpet? When will you shake off the fear of men and begin to declare the whole counsel of God? Time is growing short. Men are dying every day, having never heard that they must be born again to go to heaven. Because you did not warn them, this is God's word, their blood will be on your hands. Now some of you will try to hide behind false doctrine. Lord, I always believe that you must sin in thought, word, and deed every day. But Jesus said, Depart from me, ye that work sin. That's a ledger translation for iniquity. It is fearful to fall into the hands of an angry God. Oh, didn't you know? God is angry with the sinner every day. So what do we do in this hour we're living in? Is this plague that's on us another 9-11? Or is this it? Good question, isn't it? I'll tell you one thing that does trouble me a lot. I believe Brother Judd mentioned this morning that when 9-11 happened, Americans united in prayer. I haven't heard anything about that this time. I don't know for sure if this is the beginning of the end, but I do know this, that Jesus Christ came to deliver us from our sins and remake us into a new person. I know we can be born again because it happened to me. I know we can have a pure heart because I remember the day God purified my heart. I know Jesus can keep us from falling back into sin because he's kept me these 41 years. 
I know all men may come to Jesus and be delivered from their old life because I've seen it happen over and over and over again in my lifetime. Oh, there have been many who said it didn't work, but the ones who really surrendered found deliverance. Now these are perilous times we're living in. The Bible says that men's hearts shall fail them for fear. But the hour of salvation and the door of salvation is still open. Whosoever will may still come to Jesus. God said, oh Israel, why will you die? Surrender to Christ now and live. Behold, I come quickly, Jesus said. Will we be ready when Jesus returns? He's coming, you know. He's coming to judge all the earth. The scriptures say all the dead who have ever lived on the face of the earth from Adam to the present shall be alive and stand before the great judgment of God. And Jesus Christ shall be our judge. Every excuse and lie will be exposed. We'll all stand naked before our Creator. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Forsake your sins and come to Jesus. He will, He will, He will receive you. He'll change you into a new person. Old things will pass away. All things will become new, and Christ will give you His peace and His joy down in your soul. Fear will flee away. Christians, that's the scripture we need to remember. Perfect love casteth out fear that tormenteth. Surrender to Christ now while there is still time. Let's stand together. I'll tell you what, some of you guys need to do some very serious thinking about your lives. Very serious. Anybody want to pray this morning? I've done my best. I blew the trumpet. Brother Wooten, please dismiss us in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the word this morning. Father, we pray this morning that you would speak to every individual's heart that's not where they need to be spiritually. Help them to realize, dear Lord, and those individuals who have caused to preach, Lord, we pray, grip their hearts with the reality of the truth this morning. We praise you and thank you for this day you've given us to worship. In Jesus' name, amen.